Okay, so welcome back. Now, if you've done much software development using Microsoft Visual Studio, and on this channel we've done many videos on C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms applications, and here's an example of one that we did a while back, a multi-part series where we wrote an application where we did data acquisition from a device connected over the USB COM port. And what it did is it simulated an oscilloscope where it's gathering every fraction of a second, it's gathering data from our data acquisition device and plotting it and updating this chart in real time. So we've been doing a lot of videos like that on this channel. And we've been using the Microsoft Visual Studio C Sharp Windows Forms applications. And we've been using, in general, what's called the .NET Framework, which at this point in 2023 is maybe five or 10 years old. If you've been using .NET Framework, you probably come to the point where you say, hey, do I need to move from .NET Framework to the newer .NET Core, which is now called in 2023 .NET? Now, a lot of people, if you go online, a lot of people say, well, .NET is newer, therefore it's good, right? A lot of the hobbyists and newbies will say, well, if you don't have the newest, it's the latest, the greatest, then you're just a loser. Well, in the real world, I've been an electrical engineer over 45 years. In the real world, it doesn't work like that. What you have to do in the real world is you have to do what's called a benefit to cost analysis. If you're evaluating options, you have to put numbers to the benefits and numbers to the cost and come up with a numerical value saying, hey, is it really going to benefit us to, to spend all this money or to hire these resources or to do all of this work? Is it really worth the cost? Are we going to get benefits that are worth all of that effort? So the question becomes for me in the real life engineering world, what is the benefit to cost ratio of going through the effort to either upgrade my existing projects to .NET from .NET Framework or to just say, hey, anytime I have a new application, use .NET. So in this video, we're going to talk about what are some of the considerations you need to think about if you're considering going to the new .NET. Now, the timing of this is kind of coincidental because I'm recording this in the middle of November 2023. And in a few days, Microsoft will be releasing the latest .NET, which is .NET 8.0. So if you look online, you'll generally get vague generalizations. That's what the internet is really good at. You will get people saying the new .NET is a lot more efficient. It's smaller code base than .NET framework. And that is absolutely true. However, in the real world, does that impact you, right? Is that going to be a benefit that you need to consider or not? The other thing you're going to see is that .NET is a whole lot faster than the .NET framework. So you might say, well, it's faster. That means it's always good, right? Well, no. The hobbyist and the newbie would say, yeah, well, faster is better. The engineer would say, wait a minute. Faster in what way? Is it going to actually affect the applications that I'm working on? Or is it some vague thing that nobody actually uses that it's faster on? So vague generalities uh, are going to meet with real world benefit to cost. And we're going to give you some things to think about. So what we're going to try and do is I'm going to try and break down one aspect of this .NET compared to .NET framework, and that is the relative speed. So when I was looking at upgrading to .NET, one of the things I thought about when I was considering speed is when we did this application where we relied on .NET Framework to grab the data from our data acquisition device and every fraction of a second as fast as we could update this display, um, I relied on .NET Framework, for example, the charts control that you see here to update this chart and grab the data as quickly as possible. And what we noticed was that it's kind of slow. To some extent, it was limiting how fast we could update this chart because Windows Forms was kind of slow in updating this chart. So it occurred to me, if we wanted to really verify the speed claims of .NET compared to .NET Framework, let's come up with an application where we can actually measure it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by 
having a very simple application where we're going to measure the difference between .NET Framework and .NET in its ability to quickly update the charts. So what I've got here is I've got a very simple application, c -Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application, .NET Framework, and I think I'm 4.7. I drag and dropped a chart here. Again, if you're not familiar with charts, we've done many videos on c -Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms charts. I've got a button and I've got a text box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this. You can see I've got my form and I'm going to hit the chart button and it's automatically going to draw a chart. And what it's got down here, it's got a 16 milliseconds display that says it took 16 milliseconds once we have the data defined to actually draw it on the chart. So here is our application. Um, we basically used a stopwatch. We got a form one. Uh, it just initialized the chart. And in our button chart, what we did is we made a list of X values and Y values, a list of doubles. And then we populated those. We went with 10,000 values from 0 to 10,000. We added a value to the X vowels and then added a sign value to the Y vowels. So we're just populating 10,000 values. And then what we did is we started the, the stopwatch and called the chart method where it took points data bind x, y, and you just pass it those two lists of x values and y values, and it will chart. Then we stopped the stopwatch, and we figured out the elapsed time was that stopwatch elapsed milliseconds, and then we printed that out. So it occurred to me that it's very simple to figure out how long the chart takes to respond for 10,000 bits of data, we can do the same thing in a .NET 6 or maybe the new .NET 8 that's coming out this week and compare, at least for just the updating the chart, is it much faster? So what I did is I did a very identical Windows Forms application, but I did it in .NET 6.0. So here I'm starting up a brand new Windows Forms app, C Sharp Windows Desktop, Next. And I'm just going to call it Windows Forms app. And it's going to ask me, what framework do I want? So we got 5, 6, 7, and 8's not out yet. But I'm going to choose the long-term support 6, Create. So you can see it's waiting for IntelliSense to finish loading. And now it's loading the designer. And you may notice this is kind of slow, right? We're in .NET 6 compared to framework. This is kind of slow. It's taking a while. So that's one thing to consider. F7 to show the code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to drag and drop a button to do the charting. I'm going to drag and drop a text box to print out the time. And I'm going to drag and drop a chart. Uh, chart. Chart. I don't see a chart. So let me search chart no results found. Huh. Well, it turns out that chart controls have been deprecated in .NET. I don't know when it happened, but we're in .NET 6. There are no chart controls. So <laughs> the first thing you got to realize, going to the latest and greatest doesn't mean you're going to get better than what you had before. This is a big deal, right? If you're in the science engineering world, that's a really big deal because science engineering, we use a lot of charts. On this channel, we've used charts very, very often. So the latest is not the greatest. Now what you have to do is you have to go out and you have to find a replacement, hopefully an open source replacement for charts. And you have to think about, well, I've got to rewrite all my code to now work with this open source, hopefully, hopefully there is an open source replacement that works with .NET. And we have to write all our code. We have to figure out how that new code works. And, you know, this could be a huge pain. So what I did is I took the next step and I said, well, what open source software is out there that will give us that charts functionality? Well, what I came up with is one choice is what's called Scott Plot. You can see we're using namespace Scott Plot. And we can go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Package for Solution, Installed. 
and I've installed scottplot.winforms. Now we've got something installed, and what I've done is I took the exact same code that we had before for the .NET framework. I've got a stopwatch. Uh, our button is going to initiate this. We've got our X values and Y values lists. We're populating those. However, the Scott plot requires you have arrays. So now with my existing code, I have to now convert them both, the X values and Y values list, to arrays. That's fine. So what I've done is I've taken my stopwatch at the exact same point. However, we're now using the Scott plots. And I've added the two lines that are needed to make a scatter plot of those two, the X values array and the Y values array. And then you have to do a refresh. And what I've done is I've done a stopwatch to see how long does the Scott plot take for the exact same number of, of values after we've converted it to arrays, we're not taking that timing into account. So it's basically, here's our arrays, plot them, and we're going to see how long it takes. Now previously, it took 16 milliseconds to do the plot of 10,000 values. So I'm going to run this, and I'm going to hit chart. Here's your Scott plot. Hit chart. The answer is 62 milliseconds. From 16 milliseconds with the old Windows Forms, old software, the latest and greatest, now we have to go with 62 milliseconds. These are the kind of things you need to keep in mind in the real world. Latest does not always mean the greatest. You have to be very, very careful and not just kind of wave your hands and make believe new is awesome. You have to actually do a benefit to cost analysis. For us, the cost is huge. There's a time cost from 16 to 62 milliseconds. There is a cost of having to rewrite our code to use this. There is a cost of now having to go around and find out if there's a better solution for doing charts that's faster. And in any case, we're going to have to rewrite our existing code and learn how to use the new code. So these are things you need to keep in mind if you're going to upgrade to the latest and the greatest. So the point here is not to say that upgrading from .NET Framework to .NET is a bad idea. Absolutely not. The point is that you need to look at the benefits, you need to look at the cost, and evaluate whether the benefits are worth the cost. And you probably need to do that anytime you are choosing some options, how to proceed, do a benefit to cost analysis and look at the numbers. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.